that, that I laughed so hard. Man, I laughed at your book so hard. I laughed so hard at this book, and I read tons of books. I've read everybody's autobiography from, you know, Eric Clapton. I just got to read Maureen McCormick. Here's the story from the Brady Bunch, you know. I've read so many autobiographies, and some of them get out there that people don't even know that are funny and are just poignant, and I thought yours was just so poignant and so a slice of America. <laughs> this, this, like Maureen McCormick's book, Here's the Story, A Story Cocaine, I Screwed This and <laughs> that and other, is not like Marsha Brady, mm-hmm. you know? And that's the fun part. That's the interesting part. I like to hear about real people's lives. So it's all. I'm always curious how I compare to other writers, and you know. It... I will tell you. I sat there. I told you. I read Eric Clapton. I read Patty Boyd. I just read Molly McCormick. I read Kathleen Turner. I read all these autobiographies. And when I sat there and when I read your book, I literally laughed all day long. I was telling her. He said, "What? What?" And I tell him about the stamp, and then I tell him about the mail. Mm-hmm. It was like that you loved him. Thank God he can't get pregnant. 
<laughs> it's like I never I always thought it'd be more like a Reader's Digest thing where you get one story and you so I always no. Listen like this. This book that was in the number one store of all is Eat, Pray, and Love. Have you read it? No. This woman's autobiography, right? I love her. She's from New York City. She's been married to this guy. She makes big bucks and sometimes big wig or whatever. New York City, her husband's sweet. And in and, and this whole book, you travel the world in this book. Mm-hmm. Like with you, or like with your book, I travel the world with your dad. You know, being a bartender and a musician, with your mom being, you know how she was, your Greek background, your Nana, your Bill. In your book, I traveled a little bit back to their background. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think that's very cool. Right. To tell you the truth, I eat for love. The only thing I really loved about it, she was on Oprah and all that. And they were talking about, oh, you know, the passion and all this. Well, I really didn't feel all that passion in that book. The one thing I did learn <clears throat> about in the book, <clears throat> excuse me, I learned about India. I learned about Italy. Mm-hmm. I learned about Phuket, all these places, you know, these beautiful places and how she was in it. But, and, and also just being a, a woman, an American fan. Wake up. I'm not having a baby with this idiot, <laughs> you know. Right. I'm getting the hell out of here. Um... My favorite part of the book was, I think, about uh, Sterling because you did not down Sterling, but you just made it, you know, at least you can't get pregnant. And then my other favorite part of my, which I quote to so many people, the one the rest, and I'm like, yeah, that's like my friend, she was a tow truck driver and has double deuce and canes for carrot cake. <laughs> While they're winding down, like, you know, windy roads and that. Berkeley, Berserkly Hills or something, you know, and I loved it, and I, I, one thing I did love, too, so much, is I know how much you loved your nana, but that you said that your nana made you, you know, feel special, and she understood your need to feel special, mm-hmm. you know, and I had, uh, my granny was like that, and mm-hmm. she was alive today, you know, she would be pissed to anybody that, you know, uh, would treat me bad or anything, you know. She and Amon too. I mean, my granny and Amon were two people that knew all my warts, all my faults, all my shenanigans, and just loved me, you know. Right. And and Mitch does too. And I'm I'm so thankful I have him. And yes. when I it was uplifting. I swear, I felt your love for your mother. I felt your love even for Sterling. Mm-hmm. I felt the love for Steve, definitely. I felt the love for Nana. I felt the love for Bill. I felt your love in that whole book. You never, even your mom, that you could, you know, that you get aggravated with. Anyway, I felt your love through the whole thing, and you never, in that whole book, and that's been my thing, I was thinking about writing my autobiography or whatever. It's like, I don't want to hurt anybody. And in that book, you told the truth, but you did not hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. You did that with such grace, I can't even tell you. Mm-hmm. You know, I know, I've had conversations with you about your mom. I've had conversations with you about Sterling. It was about that asshole in the city, that, that gorgeous guy you dated, and you never, never said derogatory thing about anybody. Mm-hmm. You did not. But it was funny, it was cool. Yeah, it was fun. I I I remember trying to uh, read the story about uh, my counseling appointment to a friend, and I laughed so hard I couldn't speak. I mean, when I read these stories, I laugh like that, you know. Oh, the counselor! Oh my God, I love, I love the counselor. Oh, I love the counselor. I can't believe this fucking freak. I was telling you, well, da da da. And I'm like, no, you just don't get it. She drank 20 beers last night. She called me every fucking day of her book. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. And talking about Bill and your Nana. I mean, I loved your book. I just loved it. I laughed. 
all the way through it, I cried. And that's a good book. You know, we laugh 